staan op een pad en kijken uit over het landschap dat deels verborgen ligt achter enkele takken. De ochtend is mistig, maar voelt warm aan. Zonnestralen proberen door de wolken te breken. Fragmenten van het landschap worden zichtbaar door het licht. Anderen blijven verborgen in de schaduw. Mijn gedachten dwalen af, ontsnappen aan het moment en glijden over de omgeving. Een landschap dat even bekend als onbekend aanvoelt. De dag onthult rotswonden, bedekt met zand, steen, voorzichtige begroeiing. Hier en daar ligt de grasveld op. Bergen met donkere bossen verschijnen. Hun zwarte gekartelde toppen vormen harde silhouetten in het ochtendlicht. Ik wandel over het pad alsof ik weet waar ik naartoe ga. Ik ben hier eerder geweest. Maar ik kan me niet meer herinneren waar deze plek zich bevindt. Een beeld van deze omgeving vloeit in mijn geheugen samen met een foto waar ik vaak en lang naar gekeken heb. Ik hield de foto zo dicht mogelijk bij mijn ogen. Hopend om meerdere details te ontwaren in de schaduwrijke plekken tussen de bomen. Hopend om een vogel te ontdekken die door de lucht vloog, ergens verborgen in een blauw-grijze pixel. Ik focuste op de foto, zoekend naar sporen van onze voetstappen, zoekend naar jouw blik, glijdend over deze omgeving. Terwijl ik over het pad dwaal, voel ik hoeveel van het landschap verborgen blijft. Een tocht die maar gedeeltelijk toegankelijk is. Het beeld van dichte bossen is verdwenen. Wat rest is een onbegrensde leegte waarin nieuwe composities worden gevormd met wat overbleef van het landschap. Een fragmentarische ruimte die het virtuele met het werkelijke verbindt. Herinneringen drijven voorbij. Maar wanneer ik ze probeer vast te grijpen, lossen ze op in de eindeloze leegte. Ik volg de rivier. Er is geen pad. Paden zijn onbruikbaar in het landschap. Er is geen richting om te volgen. De omgeving wordt onnatuurlijker, maar voelt toch herkenbaarder aan dan de natuurlijke wereld. De witte kleur van het landschap reflecteert het zonlicht zo sterk dat ik mijn ogen moet bedekken. Ik hoor water, maar het is ver weg. De stilte voelt onwerkelijk. Ik voel me alsof ik me op een schip zonder bestemming bevind. Ik zie de zon verdwijnen achter de horizon. Het schip drijft verder en verder mee op het water. Mijn ogen volgen de golvingen die naar voor mij onbekende plekken gaan. Ik ben niet zeker of tijd een bepaalde richting volgt op deze plek. De rivier blijft voortstromen. Ik sta stil en kijk. Kijk hoe de wereld voorbij drijft. Ik dwaal af naar een beeld waarbij ik op mijn rug in een veld lig. Het gras om me heen beweegt traag op de wind. Bij elke beweging vervliegen mijn gedachten. De bloemen en de wolken, de stenen, de silhouetten, ze lossen op in de beweging van de wind. Het landschap vervaagt tot een schim. Een landschap dat steeds opnieuw vorm krijgt en mijn gedachten vergezelt tijdens andere tochten. Zachtjes gelijk uit het landschap. 
alles om me heen is ver van me verwijderd. Hallo en good evening. Dit is een film van Tine Seegers. Een meisje van Wuiswinkel. Het is like een walk through the countryside. Vaguely familiar and yet strange, like a fragmented memory of a place you might still remember from somewhere, a place beyond the urban. So actually, is there still something behind, behind the urban? Um, yeah, let, let's actually ask the question, who thinks there is something behind the urban context? Super difficult question. Yeah, I see one hand. Okay. <laughs> Who thinks there is still, for example, in Flanders, still something behind an urban context? Is it still? Okay. Sophia also, yeah. I see some, some fluttering hands. So, a very warm welcome to uh, another edition of um, the sixth edition already of AZ Nights. The edition is about beyond the urban. The creative potential of the periphery. And my name is Katharina Smets. I will be the host of tonight and uh, your guide through the program. I'm a radio producer uh, and also I do a PhD in the arts of um, audio storytelling, which means I make podcasts and performances and all that. Um, and also I grew up in a very typical suburb, Kesselo. Um, and for some people it is a perfect middle between I would say culture, but I mean like culture in the human way, like you have nature and then you have culture. Um, and for some people it is, a, is, a, is the perfect middle between city and, and, and nature. Um, and for some people it's a, a no man's land, a certain death. Um, but during this AZ edition we will look beyond the urban cities, the places of growth and innovation are popular. Uh, very popular amongst creatives. People move from Kesselo to somewhere else, to, um, for example. Um, and centers of, of, well, urban centers seem to give um, artistic practice an impulse. But isn't there actually something outside <coughs> these urban hotspots? And can creatives find something in the periphery, what they cannot find in cities? And how can creatives facilitate uh, creative impulses in this periphery? Yeah, all very interesting questions, I think. And uh, the theme of tonight is based on the doctoral research of Tina Segers. Um, and before I ask her uh, why she chose this opening film and ask her also about her own research, um, about uh, her, well, her, her, her choice of the theme of tonight, I want to ask you some questions. So there is more of that to come. Maybe Tina, can you can you maybe assist me for the questions? <coughs> okay. Who was here last time and already did these kind of questions? Okay, so you, you know the drill. Very good. Who of you did fill in the questionnaire of the AZ Knights already? Very good. So I might kindly ask you to fill in this questionnaire. It is good for us to know what we can improve making these is at nights. Okay, now for seriously, who was born in a city? Who was born in a village? Who was born in a suburb? Yeah. And who was born in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> who made the move from the countryside to the city? Who made the move the other way around from the city to the countryside? Yeah, more than I expected, actually. So, um, who thinks they cannot live without the city? A few very enthusiastic hands go, go up. Okay. Who thinks the countryside is boring? Oh, one hand. Okay. <laughs> who thinks the countryside is romantic? Okay, more hands. Um, who thinks the countryside is something from another time that is outdated? Nobody, okay. Who finds rest in the countryside? Almost everybody. Yeah. Even one doubter, but he, yeah, he decided he did, he did find rest in the countryside. 
sorry, who used the countryside as a source of inspiration for their artistic practice. Okay. And who thinks an urban environment is really impo important for their artistic practice? Okay. Why is this urban context? I, I think I saw a hand there who quite surely went up. Did you say like the, was it, was it you that was, who said like the, the no. <laughs> it's possible. Did you say that actually the, the um, yeah, the countryside is important for your artistic practice? Yeah, and why? So there are a lot of uh, things that come up, that challenges that you can solve when living in the, in the city or in the countryside, and, and each of them probably have, has their, their own challenge, and yeah. Interesting issue. So there is actually more critical mass in the city than in the countryside. Okay, I think we have a good start for her for night um, tonight. So Tina Segers, um, welcome. You are a researcher at the Faculty of Architecture and Arts at the University of Hasselt here, and your research focuses on the context of demographic shrinkage and the strengthening of the living environment. Can you tell me a little bit about your research? What is it, uh, what is it about? Uh, well, demographic shrinkage is mainly places where people move away from. Um, and the idea is that, well, it loses some critical mass, maybe. Um, and while you have less people working or living there, working there, uh, the challenge is to transform into the future. Uh, or not less, but I'll leave also. So, uh, so. And is there actually a shrinkage in Flanders? Because I also I always thought that there actually is not a real countryside in Flanders. There is only periphery and some city-like spots. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th there is shrinkage in Flanders, and there isn't. It's not like in the other parts of the world where you have um, entire regions that shrink. Or so it's it's much more dispersed and. Um, yeah, much less visible and much less something that you can actually discuss or, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's very, very um, interesting nevertheless because we will talk about a, a, a reinterpretation of the countryside as well, the periphery. Um, you chose to open tonight um, with this film of you and Marieke van Wuitswinkel. Um, it is in fact Marike who created the film, and uh, the voice we hear is your voice. It's it's her text, right? Um, so why did you choose this film for tonight? Um, it was about the time that we came up with the title "Beyond the Urban." Um, when you talk about urban, you also talk about non-urban, or when you talk about center, you have periphery and city or landscape or city and countryside, um, and you create a distance between those two. And um, I think the film shows an abstract space uh, where you experience this distance. Um, and Marike's work is also... Uh, I'm going too fast here. <laughs> um, no, Marike's work is also about time and memory and uh, what time does to memories and how you can shape it and how you reshape it. Um, so on the one hand, it, it's sad that it becomes fragments that, or that it becomes fragmented, that details, that you start losing details. Um, on the other hand, it frees up some space to um, reinvent things or to project your own interpretation. Um, so that's why I think when, yeah, when we came up with the title and the speakers were confirmed, uh, we thought it, this was a good adjustment as a, a perspective to start from and to start filling this up. And it will play in the background, so there will be fragments in the background. Um, so, actually, um, based on your research, you work together with uh, Pien Visser and Vera de Vreze to set up uh, this evening. What do you expect of tonight? Um, I expect to have different approaches towards what is beyond the city. 
Um, or I think that's what we try to do to have different pra or to invite different practices and how people well, use this context or work within this context. And so I expect to hear different stories and <laughs> different experiences. Yes. Uh, and, and some discussion maybe as well, different interpretations. Thank you very much. Um, let's introduce um, our guests for tonight. There will be two talks of uh, Stefan Peterman and uh, Katrin Boom. And I will also interview Gert Robbins tonight. And at the end of the, the whole program, actually, well, at the end of the whole program, there will be a group discussion. But after each talk, I will do a Q&A. And you're very much invited to ask your questions. Be free to ask your questions. Also, you received a card. Um, and that is actually for the last discussion. So if you have a question that, that pops into mind, not to forget, um, you can write it down on the card. You can also write it in Dutch and then I will translate it. So feel free. It's an experiment. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, so that. And well, all the speakers were asked to come up with five perspectives, five opinions, frameworks, claims um, that will form like a framework for their talk, for their talk. talk. And at the end of the evening, we will put these five uh, opinions uh, together, these lists together. 